Good morning, Kellen Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day 30. We're continuing our training on our campaign applets today, and we're going to dive into the social ad component today. We're going to talk about how to create a paid ad on Facebook and some nuances inside of that. So let's dive into the campaign's applet here. And we're going to end up on our home screen dashboard. Yesterday we talked about social posts. Today let's check out the paid ads home screen. So we're going to go into the paid ads screen here. And on this screen you can see, first off, how many ads have you run over the past 30 days? You can click on this drop down and show past seven, month to date, year to date, or lifetime. How many impressions you have received during this time period? how many leads you have received during this time period, and then how much you have spent. So on, on impressions, just a heads up, when you're running ads, there's three things that you're going to be looking at. You're gonna have impressions, which is the number of people that actually see your ad. Think about that like as eyeballs. Now, it doesn't mean they saw it for long. They could have just scrolled right past it, and yet it was placed in front of them. That's an impression. The second thing that you're going to see as soon as you begin running ads, and we'll do that when we do a test one, you are going to see cl um, clicks, and that is when somebody actually clicks on your lead, your ad, and depending on how you have that set up, they may go directly to your landing page, which means you wouldn't get the lead, or you can set it up to capture leads, which most people are doing, in which case the third category would be how many people are willing to submit their information to you and become a lead in your database. So all of that information will show up down here once we have some ads running, or at least in draft mode. We'll take a look at that shortly. So <clears throat> again, it is important to remember that you do have to have a credit card on file to run ads through command. So if we click on this payment screen, essentially it's going to take us into payment information. It'll tell you what credit cards you may have on file. And right now, we obviously don't have any credit cards attached. If you wanted to add a credit card, you would click on add payment method. That would run you through the process of adding in your actual credit card for your business. And then finally at the bottom, there are some detailed reporting here for how much you have spent inside of command for the different ads or metrics inside of uh, the different campaigns that you can run. So let's go ahead and start the basics. Oh, one thing real quick, remaining credits. So you can see right now there are zero credits in my account. How do you get a credit? I actually click on this little question mark and basically if for any reason you have an ad running and you choose to pause that ad before it begins, the uh, before it ends, excuse me, the remaining amount of money that has not been spent on that ad will be moved to your credit account once that ad time period runs out. Example, a 10 day ad that you pause on day five that you spent $20 on. Let's say that you had exactly $10 left to run on that ad and you choose to pause the ad. When that ad ends five days later, that additional $10 would be uh, moved into your credit here. And the next time you run an ad, it'll actually say, you've got $10 credit, do you wanna use that for this ad? So that's what remaining credits is up here at the top. Let's go ahead and just create a campaign and go into the social ad paid campaign and we'll see what this looks like. So essentially the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is choose a campaign name for your social ad. If you're doing a property specific ad, I always recommend that you have the address, the date, and then what the intent was. So let's say we did one, two, three Main Street, and it was uh, just listed, and I'm gonna do 12, one, 22. You might be doing an ad campaign around uh, neighborhood prospecting or uh, first time home buyers or you know anything. There's a lot of different ads that you can run. I just always recommend that you do put the date in there so you can kind of go back and look at your history of ads and see uh, when they were run last and maybe duplicate them from there. As far as the goal goes, essentially this is gonna help us decide uh, what we wanna do moving forward. Now this doesn't have any impact of the actual success of the ad. It is also used at KWRI or Keller Williams kind of headquarters, if you will, uh, for tracking purposes. So you do have that information uh, available for Keller Williams to kind of see what we're using their product for. So don't stress too much about this. Uh, the only one that has any difference is advertised multiple listings. There are a few things that change inside of the list, the uh, ad creation 
depending on what you choose, and yet you can you know basically do anyone. So let's just say we're gonna advertise a listing here. Finally, at the bottom, you've got which campaign or uh, social media channels you want your ad to run on. You can run them on one, two, or all three of the actual campaigns. Now you can see, I don't have Twitter connected, so it's gonna say, hey, this channel is not connected, do you wanna do it now? And I can choose to do that, right? So we'll just choose no. Um, Facebook and Instagram are run by the same company, right? So Meta owns both of them. So if you have an Instagram account connected, right? If, uh, an Instagram account connected to your Facebook account, then when you run it out on Facebook and choose to run it on Instagram, it'll run it on both. So for right now though, we're just gonna focus on running the ad on Facebook and we would choose to create the campaign. Now, when we come into this campaign creation process, the first thing, since we said we wanted to advertise a listing, it'll say, okay, what listing do you want to advertise? This is the nice thing about KW Command is that it actually connects to over 260 MLSs across the country. So right now, there are no active listings attached to this account. Remember, this is a, just a demo account, kind of a fake account. Uh, but we could come back in and say, okay, not just only my listings, let's look at all listings. And then you're gonna see, it's just gonna start bringing up properties across the nation. There's over 10,000 of them, and I think there's even more than that. So essentially, you would just come in and look up an actual property. Uh, let's see, 4219 Mount Vinson just recently closed. So I could go in and change that from active to closed. And so let's see, I think it's maybe Mount Vincent. Let's see if that works. Um, also, I have seen that sometimes looking these properties up by their MLS number um, helps find that as well. So right now we're not finding that closed listing, um, but essentially let's just assume that this was the listing. So we could choose to select that listing and it's actually gonna bring in the property it's gonna bring in the first photo of the listing, and then it's also gonna bring in the first 250 so characters of the public description of that property inside of the text area here. So for any reason we want to change the listing, we can. We would just click on Change Listing. Uh, underneath the text, these three areas are gonna show up on the right over here. So you can see the main copy shows above the photo, the headline shows below, as does the description. Headlines, be careful, you've only got 25 characters, so you gotta be short and sweet. Um, book your tour today. That's less than 25 characters, right? So that would show up. Um, for photos, click uh, here, right? Sorry, my computer is running really slow this morning for some reason. Um, so you could basically, that's not what we wanna spell photos, click here. So basically you can go through and just kind of, um, I don't think we can get more in there. That's gonna be for more photos. Yeah, click her. So, you know, you gotta be careful on what you choose to make sure all 25 characters show up or at least, you know, less than, but not more than. Inside of the description, you're gonna see that show up right here as well. Um, and they're even gonna give you some suggestions. So I can say, use this suggestion and you see it shows up right below the headline you could be coming home to this. Next up, you've got the media. Now it already chose the first listing photo, but if I click on configure, I can click on these three little dots next to that photo, and I can choose to change that image. I can crop it, or I can just remove it altogether. So if we change the image, you can see that all of the photos are gonna be pull pulled in automatically from the listing. And this is based upon the fact that our MLS is actually connected to command. So I don't have to upload, download, reload. I don't have to go into my Google Drive, my Dropbox, et cetera. We could go into any one of these photos and choose. And let's say we wanted to do the aerial photo instead. We would click on preview and crop. It's gonna show, right? And actually we wanna change this for ads. Wide is your best bet on your actual properties. So we could choose to go with that one. I could save the image. Now we're using that photo. You can also do what's called a carousel. If you wanna have multiple image ads, you can choose to add more. It's just important to note that it does kind of cut off the far uh, right-hand side of each one of the photos as it attempts to load the next photo in. So we're gonna change this to wide, choose save image, and then you'll see what the carousel looks like. So you've got image one, and then as you watch it, it'll move over to image two. Um, 
I'd say use that sparingly in my own opinion, uh, but you can kind of decide from there. Does your market center require the DBA logo be included? And where would you like that? Um, most people do have a, requ uh, a required DBA logo be included on their ads. And then find out from your market center whether the ownership statement needs to be included as well. That's it for today, guys. I'm going to pause here so the video doesn't run too long. But tomorrow, we're going to get into Facebook settings and lead settings. Talk about the lead capture form, some auto tagging, some auto smart plans that we can fire, some additional things that we can do inside of this create campaign module. So for right now, we're just going to save this ad as a draft and we're going to come back and work on it tomorrow. You can do the same thing, same thing anytime you're creating an ad. If you're halfway through and you want to uh, you know, save it for future use, just save draft. It's going to show up in your ads and now you can see Here's that ad ready for us to work on tomorrow. That's it for today, guys. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And as always, I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.